Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you all. Uh, we're just going to wait a few minutes until we get everybody in. Um, so just uh, hang hang tight for a couple minutes, and then probably 802, 803, we'll get started. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, for those of you just joining, just waiting another minute or two, and we should be getting started momentarily here. Thank you. So it is uh, 8.03, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Michael, to get us started. Thanks. Thank you, Arthur. All right. Um, well, we're going to talk here about uh, an innovation that we developed over the past couple of years here at the USA Global Health Supply Chain Program, Procurement and Supply Management. Um, I'm going to start and then hand this over to my colleague, Arthur, in just a, a couple minutes. Um, next slide, please, Arthur. Arthur will help me drive, though. So um, there we go. OK, so quick agenda. I'm uh, going to go over what the problem is that we are here to provide a supporting solution to potentially. And that is the drugs out of rain or door system. We're gonna talk about what that system is, uh, talk about an evaluation we did of this and the findings and lessons learned, which we hope might be helpful to anybody else who's trying out something similar. Uh, so next slide. So what is the problem we were approaching here? Well, for women who choose modern contraceptive methods to support their family planning goals, consistent access key point, an essential element that's going to support healthy, productive lives. Now, getting that consistent access is the problem. In lower and middle income countries, frequent stockouts of medicine at service delivery points, or SDPs, is, is a perennial problem. It's always rearing its head, right? And one driver of this is a lack of visibility into stock levels. And there's many reasons why there may be stockouts, but having the data to understand where those stock levels are, where there might be events at facilities is very important. Why? Again, could be many reasons, but many of these sites, many, many of these sites in these countries that, that we're working in um, have paper reporting systems. And so what does that mean? Instead of having an ELMIS, an electronic logistics management information systems, they are going to send this in paper, which goes up levels and up levels and finally gets sent uh, into uh, input into computers and, and the analysis can be done and we can see where there are stockouts. Well, how does that work in practice? Let's say there's a stockout on June 3rd. Well, at the end of June, these paper reports will get filled out, put in a backpack, sent on the back of somebody's motorcycle and gone up to the district and the provincial and then the national level. And by the time that is seen and people see that the situation is getting dire, it could be six weeks, um, easily could be a few weeks. And so what we're trying to do is find a way to, to compress that, that timeline. Next slide. So 
the, the solution we're proposing to try and um, facilitate some of that data uh, knowledge is the door system. And what we aim to do is provide a user-friendly method for real-time alerting of stock status to those overseeing management, right? And we say alerting, this is not designed to replace an existing or a soon to hopefully be built uh, logistics management information system, but it is meant to augment the systems that are already there uh, the same way a, a smoke alarm would. It's certainly not gonna take the place of putting out the fire. Uh, the door system utilized Wi-Fi enabled internet of things devices. What, what does that mean? Um, well, we actually have, I think I noticed the guy who built these things, uh, Jim Harris on the line today. Thank you, Jim. I may, I may ask you a question later on. Um, I'm glad you're here, but uh, we all know what internet of things means. Um, my dryer pings my phone when my clothes are dry. That's amazing. That's great. Well, let's see, how can we take that same technology and use it for something like this? The devices are how do we get this both in focus? They're this big. Look, it's a tiny little box. It's got three buttons. I'm gonna show you those in a minute. But, but that's all it is. They're installed in the public sector health service delivery points in Angola is where we did our pilot. One per product. We did four products um, in, in each of these sites. And the goal is to increase visibility into stock levels by reducing the time lag to alert managers, right? It's just a, it's a, it's a ping to them and let them know. And we hope to reduce the prevalence of stock outs at facilities using this system. Next slide. So our approach uh, has started to get into this. So the system uh, was a USAID funded activity. It started, meaning we actually implemented, we installed these, these, these uh, systems uh, in September of 2019. The pilot program installed the buttons into public sector health SDPs in Angola, which had a, a, a set of tracer items, which I'll, I'll go over, that we wanted to track and see if we can uh, uh, change how uh, the, 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 um, the stock status using this. Next slide. Okay, so what is it? As I say, the door system hardware is installed at the SDPs and it's put right next to where the commodity is, right? If the commodity is on the shelf over here, we're gonna put the button right there so you know where it is. As part of the routine checks, when the pharmacy sees that stock might be getting low, well, there's a yellow button right there. You can see it on the screen. If it's stocked out, which we hope that doesn't get to that if we have a low stock button, the red button is pressed. When stock is refreshed, the green is 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 pressed now the screen that you see whenever the button is pressed uh you see a a, a notification and um a confirmation that the it actually went through the map here that you see on the right each of the dots is a uh installation point these are live actually this one right now is not live but when it's the system is live, these are live, you could hover over it and see real time status uh, of the commodities because that status is represented by the last button push. Um, next slide. Okay, so what is this thing? How does it work? Um, the button here, one thing to, to stress here is it is, the system is autonomous. It doesn't need to use internet from the sites or anything from these pharmacies or, or SDPs. Uh, the system, the, the button itself is Wi-Fi enabled and it connects to a tiny little hub that we also installed that is has a SIM card in it. So it can access uh, cell service, local cell service. Um, we actually got, cards from T-Mobile. Thank you, T-Mobile helped us out with this, this process here that worked there in Angola and they made sure of it. Um, and with that autonomous closed system, we didn't have to worry about uh, anything except plugging that in. Um, and even that had battery, so we were, we were okay. Um, once the button is pressed, it 
is connected to a web-based service that integrates different web apps called IFTTT, if this, then that. If this red button is pushed, it updates a Google Sheet in a certain way, or yellow or green. It adds a line to a Google Sheet. If, if this, then that will do that. Following that, if the Google Sheet is updated, it updates a Power BI data analytics and visualization uh, instance. And that's the dashboard that you saw that has the, the mapping. So all of that is in real time, the mapping as well. Um, at the same time, we use another web-based service called Zapier. Now that is looking at uh, the Google Sheet. When the Google Sheet gets updated and has a line added because the button was pushed, Zapier then works with one other communication service called ClickSend. ClickSend sends SMSs. And ultimately that is our goal right here. When a button is pressed almost instantly, SMSs get sent to the right people, the municipal family planning advisor, the provincial family planning advisor, and others. Arthur gets it, I get it, just to make sure that this is all working as do people on our project. Um, this all looks quite complicated. Uh, it works almost instantly. It is a bit complicated and we hope to streamline that in the future, but that's the back story. Let's go to the next slide. The real story is what happens when those messages get sent, right? So technology is one thing and it's interesting and it was really fun to work out, but here's, here's what happens in real life. The button gets pressed, and the next thing that happens after the District Ministry of Health Warehouse gets that message is they call the health facility. See, this is not a technology-driven system. This is a person-driven system that's assisted by technology. They determine whether or not the button was pushed appropriately, what action to take. Might be a mistake. People like pressing buttons. We understand that. No harm, no foul. Reset the button, press green, and let's keep going. If there is uh, an actual stock out or a low stock event, uh, the, the associated staff here would check if there's product available. If there is, can it be picked up? Yes, they arrange it, products delivered, we reset the door button, terrific. If not, we'll still monitor the situation and make sure that it can be picked up when possible. If there is no product, we still, need to know that there are stockouts. At this point, the district MOH staff can advocate for more supplies. We can often try and find it elsewhere, but, but they know, knowledge, they have the data that there is a problem. And so this really is focused on the people responding to this alert. And next slide. All right, so why does this door system work? As I started saying, the, the complete system, we call it a, the door system and not the door button because it is more than just this button. It's more than that thing up on, on the wall uh, that you can see in this picture. It requires stakeholders to report and respond, which involves principles of monitoring and modifying behavior. This, we understood going into this, was not a technology project. It was a behavior change project. The system influences staff's attitudes and motivates them to use DOOR to report the stock status in real time. Um, it was a lot easier for people to press a button when they saw that the, the item right next to it was running low than it was sometimes to have to go get the right paper, fill it out, and do all that. That still has to happen, but at least we know what the status is quickly. The system brings the locus of control closer to the end user and increases the self-efficacy, this ability for the person to really believe that they can make some um, impact, some change in, in, in what is needed here and in a timely matter, manner. Um, next slide. So what are we monitoring? This was a pilot. We're not doing everything in a pharmacy here. And we're, we're looking specifically at uh, three contraceptives, 
and anti-malarial. So cyanopress, injectable contraceptives, uh, Jadel that are implants and male condoms and say, and one other anti-malarial for good measure um, because that was very important in these sites because they had them available in case there were things running out. Um, and because uh, uh, PMI, President's Malaria Initiative was also um, helpful in helping us fund this. Um, so next slide. All right, I am going to go through a bit of the timeline here, and then I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Arthur, to uh, let us know how it went, um, to give you an idea of the context. Time is important here, given the last few years, as you know. In 2019, we worked with Jim Harris, um, who at the end of this, I do wanna uh, make sure we say a, a good hello to, I hope he's there. Um, he helped us develop the concept uh, built this in a, in a garage over many long nights. And then we went to Angola, uh, Haley and I to install these into the pilot sites. Um, this was in now September of 2019. We were very excited about this. It was all working and people there were so excited. And then 2020 came and two months later, we realized we had to slow our role because for one thing, there was a national contraceptive stock out in Angola. Uh, this was unexpected and it did not help matters. And so we really needed to put things on, on a bit of a hold because what happens if people are using the door system, they press the button up, oh, we're out, but there's nothing to replace it with. Um, not a great situation for anybody, including somebody wanting to test whether a system works. Um, luckily, we got emergency procurements into Angola in March, 2020, just as COVID-19 was unfolding. So we now had to uh, face the ministry diverting facility staff, understandably to focus on that response. Halfway through the year, things started to level out they knew what they were doing and how to respond to COVID. We were able to get some procurements delivered uh, for uh, contraceptives and our evaluation of the system started properly in July of 2020, 10 months after installation. I never expected these buttons to last more than six months. Again, Jim, apologies. You built them better than I, I, we all thought um, because even in 21, two years after installation, they were, they were doing great. They were going strong and we were able to, to actually get through this, complete the evaluation in, in January of last year and uh, decommissioned in August. So the buttons now are, are not working. The system has been enclosed. We're investigating uh, what happened and, and a talk like this is, is one way we're doing this to uh, present to you our findings and to get feedback. So on that note, I believe I am going to hand it over to uh, my colleague, Arthur, who is going to take us through the actual evaluation that we did of this. Arthur. Hi, thanks, Michael. Uh, and good morning and good afternoon to everyone uh, who's joined us today. Uh, so we're going to go through the uh, results of the uh, evaluation, talk a little bit about um, the principles that we applied as we uh, approach and design this evaluation and then the results of it and, and the so what. So door system evaluation uh, was a uh, mixed methods evaluation uh, focusing on the effectiveness, the viability and the acceptability of the system. Uh, we felt that these three dimensions were sort of the most important uh, paradigms to explore, to understand both um, how the system operates um, and, you know, is it effective? Is it capable to run in, in the set in the setting that we uh, deployed it in? Um, and if the, the people who really drive the system uh, accepted it, found it to be useful and were able to integrate it into their uh, daily behaviors. So uh, data collection methods for this included both um, quantitative analysis of the uh, information that we gathered through the um, technology, excuse me, technology stack that Michael had described. 
Um, so all of our all of the data points that were generated um, were all logged in as events in these Google Sheets, which allowed us to do um, uh, analysis of the information after the fact to have a better understanding of, of performance. Um, we also did uh, long format interviews um, with individuals who were operating the system. So we spoke to both uh, end users uh, who were receiving um, the text messages at the different uh, points in the supply chain, um, as well as interviewing um, the provincial focal point who sort of oversaw um, all of the supply chain coordination uh, within the geography that we were working in. Um, and then also closed-ended questionnaires to get a sense of people's uh, perceptions of, of uh, their ability to impact uh, stockouts and, and their feelings and perceptions towards the system. So this information was uh, collected by uh, our PSM staff uh, in Angola, um, as well as some consultants that we had brought on to help us uh, with, this, with the uh, implementation and monitoring of the system. Um, and then the analysis was done uh, by the door team uh, here at, in Washington at BSM. So the five evaluation questions um, that we had posed for this uh, were, one, is the door system effective at increasing the visibility of stock levels at SDPs, at service delivery points? Um, is the door system effective at, at reducing stockouts of health commodities? Um, is the implementation approach of the door system effective in generating compliance by participants in the response to stock alerts? Um, is the door system practical, cost-effective, and replicable in other environments? And it, the, does the door system increase users' sense of uh, empowerment and satisfaction with uh, stock management and reporting? So as you can see, these, th these five questions really do echo those three tenets um, that we were really interested in exploring the effectiveness of the system, uh, its viability within the context, and then the acceptability of that system by its users. <clears throat> um, so as Michael had mentioned, and I think this is important context to, um, uh, to, to provide as we go through these results, um, that a good portion of the time that uh, the door system pilot was operating, we were uh, dealing with some pretty significant um, environmental factors that were influencing the ability of the system to operate both from a uh, product perspective in terms of what uh, um, commodities were flowing through the supply chain, as well as the individuals who were uh, in, expected to um, be operating it. Uh, I'm getting some, some comments about the audio. Uh, Michael, can you hear me okay? I, I, can, hear, I can hear you fine. Um, we have a moderator here. Can you let us know maybe what you're hearing on your end? Yeah, I would, for those who are having some trouble, I think we're coming through clearly, but I would just double check your uh, your connection. Um, yes, I do apologize about that. I'll I'll try to speak as clearly as I can to make sure that um, everyone can hear, but thank you for, for letting us know. Um, so yeah, so it's important to note that, um, you know, we did have these um, challenges happening in the background. So uh, it's, you know, these sort of affected the, the amount of the system, uh, the amount that the system could be utilized, excuse me. So during this six month evaluation period, um, the door system received uh, 40 alerts. Uh, I think it's important to also note that um, we had uh, 21 uh, pilot facilities. I'm not sure if um, Michael had mentioned that. So just to give you a sense of the scope and scale, um, there were six months and uh, 21 uh, sites uh, involved. So uh, during the evaluation period, the door system received a total of 40 uh, alerts, or so button pushes uh, into the system. Uh, 25 of those buttons were considered uh, true stock status event changes, and uh, 15 were considered unintended button pushes. Uh, and so the way that we're able to uh, determine that information um, is, as you had seen in the process map that Michael had um, detailed, um, there is <clears throat> the expectation that the municipal focal point who receives the SMS from the system uh, is to call the service delivery point, uh, point of contact to follow up on that. So that was always happening, that was as part of the system, but we also had a secondary um, mechanism to, um, to confirm that this uh, was in fact actually happening. And so we had a consultant who was also uh, receiving every single alert and then creating and then conducting his own follow-ups um, to validate that information. So of course the municipal focal points were uh, recording and maintaining this information for their records. Um, but for the purposes of the evaluation and to, to be able to validate uh, what's going on, uh, we had this additional secondary check. Um, so every time that a button push was, was um, 
um, observed, uh, our consultant would uh, place a phone call immediately to that um, to that person to in to just confirm the the different aspects of it. So, did you intend to push push the button? Why did you intend to push the button? What was the product that you intended to alert by pushing the button? Um, and you know, do you, did you receive a follow up phone call from uh, the municipal focal point. So this allowed us to have this secondary check that would make sure that we could sort of monitor how the system was operating in real time. Um, and so for those 25 button pushes, 80% um, of facilities did receive a phone call from their municipal focal point within 24 hours of, of placing that button push on the device, um, which obviously represents a, a significantly, you know, massively faster uh, point of contact and, and communication point between facilities and, and the supply chain actors that support them um, as opposed to how it was, uh, was working on, on paper before. Um, so here on this slide, we're talking about the system compliance and the, the downstream impacts. Um, so of the, of the button pushes that we had, 80% uh, did receive a phone call uh, from the municipal focal point. Um, and then uh, two thirds of the alerts that had a minimum stock alert on it uh, did receive did result in a, a prioritized delivery. Um, but unfortunately, so we had for those stock alerts that indicated a stock out, um, while the system did function correctly and it did bring the awareness of that stock out to the supply chain actor who could uh, be in the best position to alleviate that stock out situation, um, there were no commodities available. Um, to to restock. So as we had pointed out in the process map, you know there are obviously if if commodities are available and uh, there it is uh, rational to restock that facility ahead of its regular distribution cycle, then it would receive that emergency delivery. Um, but uh, in this case, or in many of the cases that we saw with with stock outs, unfortunately, with the low amount of commodities in the pipeline in general. Um, those uh, some of you know some of those stock out alerts were not able to be uh, provided with uh, a, a an emergency distribution of commodities. Of course, the by being aware of that, the system actors could then prioritize regular delivery to make sure that those those facilities received them as soon as possible. But they were not able to get an out of uh, regular delivery uh, or out of regular cycle delivery. Excuse me. Um, so we do want to spend a little time uh, acknowledging the system users and, and their perspectives towards that because that was a key key piece for us. Um, so in the alert generation role, this is where the, the users of the system are actually pressing the buttons to, to create the stock alerts. These were the pharmacy technicians. Um, they, they demonstrated or they expressed that they had experienced an increased sense of empowerment uh, to resolve their own stock management challenges. Um, these are quotes, these are direct quotes from the interviews themselves that we conducted. Um, they did express some frustration with the internet connectivity challenges, and I will get to that in just a moment. Um, but they did also did experience um, uh, an increase, excuse me, that's a typo in the, in the slide, experience an increase in the ease of reporting, or, or I think I meant to write a decrease in the length of reporting. So yes, reporting stockouts of medicines is, is easy and quick was the, was the quote. So certainly, um, we got a very strong and positive feedback from, from users, both uh, people who were um, using the system to generate alerts, as well as individuals who um, were responding to those alerts. So unpacking the technical challenge. Um, so one of the challenges that we faced uh, in Angola was actually not so much with the technology that we designed uh, and created with, with uh, Jim Harris, but actually with the technology that we needed to use um, in order to connect our devices to the broader internet and to be able to, to have those devices communicating to us. So one of the challenges that we, we noted is, you know, we had made the decision to go with um, a multinational telecom provider um, like um, T-Mobile in order to have uh, some of the analytical and, and, and visibility capabilities that we knew those providers to have. Um, and so that we were also unsure of the volume of data that we were going to generate and, um, you know, we wanted to have some flexibility to it. Um, but I think one of the things that we realized uh, during that process was that using um, international SIM cards actually provided some challenges when it came to uh, the system. So it wasn't so, you know, we 
we, re we realized at a certain point that some of the facilities needed to have a different type of SIM card in order to be more effectively connected to the local network. Um, and so we didn't, we came across those challenges a little bit later in the pilot. Um, and so we have uh, disaggregated our results on this slide by those facilities that were having IT challenges and those that were not in order to be able to provide both an acknowledgement to the fact that we were having an environmental uh, you know, context challenges and also to be able to demonstrate the facilities that uh, did not have those IT challenges and the, the level of compliance it had. So compliance from facilities was encouraging, but it was highly variable. Um, facilities that experienced internet challenges um, had a higher rate of unintended pushes and a lower rate of compliance uh, with expected pushes. So to explain expected pushes um, in the background, besides just monitoring um, the process by having our consultant uh, do the feedback loop a second time to, to validate all of those actions. Um, we also did uh, monthly stock analysis. So these uh, reports, you know, these paper reports were coming in late. So um, we, as soon as we were able to have received that information, which was, you know, after the fact, we then did a retrospective analysis to see when stock statuses did change according to traditional paper reporting systems. And um, so we use that information to create the universe of the number of times we expected the stock status to change based off of that historical information. So we overlaid the expected pushes of when consumption drove stock status changes with the actual pushes that we observed to then be able to determine um, what were the expected pushes and what were the actual uh, button pushes? So, um, so that's so that's what we mean by the statement of high rate of unintended pushes and a lower rate of compliance with expected pushes. So, an unintended push would be um, this would happen if when the facility had an IT challenge, um, it would sometimes be difficult to. So, the way the button works is that when you hold the button down, the user receives a confirmation message that runs across the small LED screen. Uh, letting them know that they have effectively sent that message. Um, and so with the internet challenge, uh, that message would sometimes not come through all the way. So it would, uh, it would uh, encourage users to want to press the button another time in order to actually receive that confirmation push or that confirmation message. But the challenge was there was the internet connectivity, not so much that the message didn't get to it. It was just that it wasn't finishing the feedback loop before, um, you know, because of the variability in the connection. Um, so then facilities that did not have internet challenges uh, had a lower rate of unintended pushes, um, a higher rate of compliance, and uh, two instances where they had 100% compliance with the expected button pushes. Um, so, so what this really is demonstrating to us is that when the uh, internet uh, connectivity challenge that we were trying to work through um, wasn't a factor, uh, we did notice that um, facilities were uh, operating the system as it was intended, uh, complying with expectations, and really monitoring carefully their stock and making sure that they were uh, actuating the buttons uh, as appropriate. So moving to the uh, government stakeholder response. So these are the uh, municipal focal points. They had a high rate of compliance uh, with, with expectations of their behavior, which was to provide a follow-up phone call uh, to the service delivery point uh, staff uh, within 24 hours. Um, they did not ex express that they had an increased workload uh, due to participation in the system. Um, and they felt that the increased visibility enhanced their ability to carry out their responsibilities. Uh, and they endorsed the idea of expanding the use of the system, but did, they did express the need to solve the, the connectivity challenge uh, first. Uh, so overall, um, you know, at a, at a high level, uh, so what worked well? Um, municipal focal points had a high rate of response to system alerts. Um, some sites were able to use the button effectively and consistently. Uh, and SDP staff generally felt that they had an increased sense of empowerment to reduce stockouts within their facilities. And what didn't work um, is the internationally procured hardware had some connectivity issues, which created some frustrations with the system and was a big point of learning for us. Um, and some sites with no connectivity issues still use the system intermittently. So there is a there was an acknowledgement that we did have sort of the high performers, high flyers. Um, we did have a few sites that even though they, they had everything they needed, they weren't um, consistently using it, um, which indicates to us that you know some additional training was needed in those facilities in order to uh, ensure that the system was working appropriately. 
So key le lessons learned for us out of this challenge, things that we want to share with this audience um, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, move forward in, in, in our work in supply chain is to procure locally as, as much as possible. Um, you know, importation of technology can be challenging. So certainly do your research. Uh, it's really important to make sure that you have all the, the right pieces in place. Um, local advocacy and buying across stakeholders is critically important for sustaining the activity. Um, we certainly felt that was true at the beginning and put a lot of a focus into that. And I think that paid dividends out for us in the end in terms of our results. And then, um, you know, staff turnover is a, is a perennial challenge at facilities. So you, you got to plan for it. Um, I think COVID exacerbated and enhanced our perspective on that. And so really reinforced that. Um, it certainly is something that I think many practitioners within the uh, health supply chain space would be aware of, um, but certainly something that we like to, to remind uh, and, and raise again with this audience. Um, so where are we now? So the door system was uh, funded through one-time seed funding for innovative approaches to help uh, reduce pharmaceutical stockouts. Um, you know, our operating environment, as we had discussed, uh, continues to limit the system's ability to function in some ways. Um, but our team is committed to sharing our story and we are, you know, doing these events to, to, to share the technology. The everything was developed through through USAID funding, so of course, all of it is, is publicly accessible. We're more than happy to discuss uh, any of those uh, components if if another uh, group was interested in replicating this in another environment. Um, and so, with that, that's the end of our presentation. Um, but we do have about twenty minutes uh, to do question and answer here. So I think uh, what we're going to do to make this the easiest is we'll go through the questions that we have already received. Um, and then if there are any after that, um, we can we can take additional. So uh, I'm gonna look, just, look, uh, I just, one more thing I wanted to add. And, and sure. I see there's some great questions and uh, I, I'm really looking forward to getting to a couple of those. Uh, uh, it was pointed out to me actually by, by uh, Jim, who is, uh, as we mentioned, uh, helped develop these buttons. One of the key attributes of this system going into this and, and really trying to work within the confines of is this was done cheap. Um, I, I think that's relevant. This was, we tried to do this in a way that I say cheap, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, this was done in a way to, to it. I think this could be a very easy thing to do or many people might think um, an easy thing to do if we just threw millions of dollars at it and you know had things that looked like iPhones and everything was great. Um, I think each of these cost, what was it, $20, Arthur? Uh, For hardware and materials and, and construction, yeah, it was about $20, $22 per unit. Yeah, and and all of the systems that, that I took you through at the beginning of the interconnectivity between um, to, to get from there to, to the database, to the, uh, uh, to the dashboard, to the system that sent the SMSs and the responses were, were pennies Per installation, if if not free, and so that was that was another challenge that that we sort of put on ourselves. Um, let's let's see if we can do this so that once it was, uh, we were at a point where we wanted to you know hand this over, um, it, it was something that could be done. So just just I think that's that's a really good point. Um, and and on that note, should we go to questions? Yeah, so we have some questions in the chat and we have some questions in the Q&A folder. So I'll read the questions out loud, Michael, and if you wanna take it for a response, just go for it and I can chime in at the end. Sound good? I'll do my best. Great, uh, so our first question from Andrea is, um, hello everyone, uh, why did you select Angola where the HR technology and internet are known to be very weak? Thanks. What a great question. Um, Excellent question. I don't know that we have a great answer to that, but it was, I, look, we wanted a challenge. What's also weak is the ability to measure data. Um, we were going into this with the understanding that uh, many of the sites that we wanted to do this pilot in took literally months to get data up. Stockouts were, were blind. And, and so, we, you know, on one hand, I could say, we selected that very purposefully because we wanted a, you know, to, to really, um, challenge the system and, and really make a big difference. The other, the other reason is um, they stepped up to it. I, I really, you know, we, we were looking for pilot countries and 
there were a, a number of, of places that said, man, I don't know, it sounds different. It sounds weird. We don't know if it'll work. Maybe it'll get in the way of things. And they said, hey, this, this, this is great. Let's try it. Um, it says that was pretty much it, uh, Arthur. Um, I, yeah, I think I would I would add to that that um, you know as as part of the broader GHSC PSM project, you know we tried to we wanted to operate in a country where we already had a field office presence to make it easier for us to support. So that was the first sort of uh, circle that we drew around countries. Um, I think the next piece is that we wanted to make sure that we recognize what other um, LMIS type interventions might be going on in different countries. Um, and so we wanted to sort of from that see where there are still pr pretty significant data visibility needs. Um, I'm gonna answer a second question at the same time as this, because I see it in the chat. So yes, Angola does have, uh, David Crew Brown uh, wrote, I understand that Angola has implemented open LMIS um, to manage stock at, at facilities. Is that not an effective require? Is that not effective requiring additional door requirement? So it's a great question. And I'm gonna answer the two together because um, yes, open LMIS is being uh, rolled out in Angola, um, but we have always maintained that this is not a system that's supposed to replace an LMIS. It's not a system to manage the information that you need in order to run a supply chain. It's designed to provide you an alert in situations where you don't have visibility at the last mile. And so lots of different uh, countries across you know, Sub-Saharan Africa are working through you know, rolling out full ELMIS down to the service delivery point. Um, but that in many places is still a vision and not a reality. So in Angola, Open LMIS is currently operating at the district level. They have not reached the facility level. And you know, in the time that it takes that implementation to reach there, there is still a significant period of time where people are not getting the commodities they need. There are stockouts. So this system is really designed to be uh, something to help facilitate alerts of stockouts um, in order to close that gap. It's not designed to replace LMIS. So Angola was ultimately chosen as a place that had um, really poor visibility at the last mile um, and acknowledgement that they needed to improve that and a certain period of time still off in the distance where they weren't really able to, to utilize ELMIS at the service delivery point and were really interested in using a system like this one. Okay, so the next question, um, thanks for this excellent presentation. This is from Gladys. Uh, thanks for the excellent presentation and sharing the pilot outcomes. I would like to know if you could measure the pilot's success and how you would manage the additional costs related to the out of the cycle replenishment process. Uh, great questions. Um, so I would like to know how you measure the pilot's success. So I think we tried to define success uh, through the different constructs that I had explained through effectiveness, viability, and acceptability of the system, uh, recognizing that it is part technology, but it's mostly people driven. Uh, we tried to focus our results around that, but ultimately centering ourselves in the outcomes that we're all interested in, which is increased visibility and reduced stockouts. Um, so I think that's the approaches we had to measurement. Um, and then in terms of the, the costs, that is a great question. So these were out of cycle distributions. Um, all of the facilities were located within Luanda province, uh, but not within the city of Luanda. So they were reasonably close, but not uh, extremely close. Um, so in those situations, it was really a mixture of who was able to do it. I think it was partially self-collection and it was partially um, if trucks had already other thing, you know, other distribution activities going on within the area, they were able to, to bring that in. So um, I, certainly that was an issue that we hope to discuss in, in a more systematic way um, had we gone further, but I think for the six month period of the evaluation, that's how we handled that. Um, okay, so our next question is, uh, what are the key differences between the door system and other existing ones? Um, this is an anonymous question. So I, th I think if we take your question at the, at the value of, um, if this versus LMIS. Um, so, you know, obviously an LMIS system is designed to, at minimum, to take the three key uh, data points that you need, which is opening balance issues, um, you know, uh, expiries or, or, or losses and, and closing balances. Um, and the system is just not designed around those fundamental data points. Um, uh, the system was designed just to provide the, the stock status. And um, you know, stock status is, is obviously something that's based off of a calculation. Stock status is, is defined by certain um, months of stock that you have and predetermined maximum minimum, minimum inventory control levels. So there is 
Um, so we did, we did have to do some work with the facility staff to help them uh, approach it in a little bit more of a qualitative way, just to, you know, say, you know, you understand your facility, you understand when you're running low on, 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 on stock. So it's not that we're looking for you to tell us exactly when you hit one month of stock left or two weeks of stock left that you need to hit the yellow button, but you, no one knows your facility better than you do. So you please press the button when you feel like you are running low um, or you are running out. Obviously that can have some effects, uh, you know, that can, Perception can have some effects on 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 ordering and and you know bullwhip and that sort of thing, but uh, that wasn't really an issue, particularly in uh, in such a low stock environment in general. Um, and then, so we have another question here. It's like, I would like to know how you determined that these stockouts were real and not brought on by, say, irrational prescribing or leakage of commodities from the system. Okay, so. Um, well, so the, the primary commodities that we were using were contraceptives, um, so, right? So that's, that's not really irrational prescribing. That's a demand-driven construct. It's a little bit different than say like amoxicillin or an essential medicine that you could have irrational prescribing practices that might uh, influence something like that. Um, but this was really more demand-driven by the, by the, you know, the users, the, the, the women that, that needed to have contraceptives available to them. Um, we also did, uh, uh, you know, as part of our overall technical assistance within Angola, we are aware of the um, overall pipeline, the national pipeline of contraceptive products, and we do have access to information at the different uh, warehouse levels in terms of stock. So it wasn't that we believed that these facilities were just stocked out and that was an anomaly on a national level, but we understood on a quantitative level exactly what the stock was at, you know, nationally for Angola in terms of contraceptives and within the provinces. Yeah, the nice, the nice thing about our visibility into that is we were, you know, we, we didn't go in there alone. We worked uh, at these sites very closely with the STP pharmacist managers, but also with the uh, provincial managers who knew everything that, that was happening there and, and were very concerned about not having stock outs and were really tracking this closely. Um, knew where everything was along the route. We we did not question. I mean, I, certainly in places I've questioned whether leakage is uh, is an issue. Um, here, it, it, it really well, did not seem to be. Uh, so we have a, another question here, Michael. I'll, I'll give this one to you. So um, how long did it take to train providers until the system was ready to work? And how many technicians were trained? Uh, yeah, good question. We, so we went in there with some documentation. We had posters in, uh, in Portuguese that we could use to train people and take them through it. It was interesting because the, the, we also went in as, as Arthur said, there was a, a, a terrific consultant, uh, Dorito, who was, who was with us the whole time, who, um, helped us communicate this and get the message across. What was interesting is the first one or two trainings we did at sites people were very excited about this but they just weren't getting it and and it i didn't understand why they didn't understand and uh and we couldn't figure it out until somebody also on our team based based there in angola said no 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 you 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 know you're using words as if it was an lmis you know we're monitoring stock you're going to report these things it's once we started using in, in Portuguese the, 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 the message that it is an alert, it is, it is a way to, you know, get the, get the, 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 the ears and eyes of the, of the person who can now make a difference by, by you know, pressing that, that button, everything changed. And, and all of a sudden there was, oh, got it, got it. And so it, the training is very simple. We're gonna put this here. When you're low, you press this button. When you're out, you press this button. What does low mean? Well, what, you, the conversation went sometimes like a little bit of, you know what low means, right? I mean, when you have, do you know what, a, uh, what does a month of stock look like? And, and across the board, as Arthur said, you know, they have such insight into, into what's coming in, what's going out, that it was very clear to them, what, you know, what a week stock would be, what a month stock would be. And so, it, you know, if, had we not had that, we were prepared to do the, 
analysis to figure out what does a month stock look like, put a maybe a yellow card in back of what a month is, um, but, but that was very clear. And so once we had the language, right, I'd say the, 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 the trainings went very quickly. And, and after an hour, we had, we had installed it, we had trained it, we left. But then we also made sure that uh, Adorito, this consultant, um, was going back frequently. Uh, just to check up on how things were, answer some questions, uh, and 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 see that see that um, any problems that we're having, for instance, these technology problems connecting to the internet, were were problems that we could solve, and not not about training. So, okay, so a couple more questions here. I want to make sure we get to everything. Uh, did you have a chance to pilot door at facilities which provided ART services? Um, yeah, the facility, so some of the hospitals that the door system was at did provide ART services. Um, we did not employ any ARVs in our tracer commodities, um, but we had, at some point had, we did start exploring the possibility of expanding to um, ART sites in other provinces in Angola. Um, then next question here is, uh, aside from the municipal and provincial uh, family planning advisors, does the municipal provincial logist logistician receive the stock out message? So I think maybe we should try to explain what that we mean by focal point. So within the, the way that the, the ministry manages their supply chain, there is a person responsible for each municipality from a stock perspective. And their job is to ensure that adequate stock is, is flowing there. We were working primarily with contraceptive products. So these were all part of the national family planning program. And so these people were responsible to oversee stock and, and service um, at these facilities. So they were the best you know, we, we went to our team and to the government to ask who the best person is to empower with the system. And this was the person they had identified who was the actor had the right linkages to the supply chain uh, and to the, you know, the actual warehousing people to, to make this happen. Um, and, and it was interesting when we went in, um, we had a system designed that would send emails to the right person. It was much easier to do emails. Uh, in fact, Google Sheets, once that gets updated, you could automatically send emails. And then we got there and everyone said, we're, we're not using emails. Uh, not one person on this chain, the um, you know logistics people, uh, the, 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 the focal points, they, they were all running around from place to place and had their phones. So on the fly, we had to all you know think of a way, okay, there must be a system to, to send SMSs instead. Um, Luckily, the system that we selected had just incorporated the other systems into their family about a month before. So this all worked out. Um, and, and we did make sure that, as Arthur saying, that the right people trying to triangulate and confirm that those were the right people got it. And as many people as needed it could, could, could get that message. So, uh, And then so... Well, next question here we have is, how did you select the products that were targeted? Um, there are other products that are vital for, vital for patients that require a high level of stock availability. Uh, and then can the door system be set up for products that are critical at one point and then change at another point? That last question, I see that uh, the Jim answered it in the chat. So thank you, Jim, appreciate that. Um, the answer is yes, you can change it on the back end um, because that's where you set it up to be flexible like that. So the products were selected um, partially out of the nature of the way that the pilot was funded. Um, so this work was funded through USAID, uh, through the uh, Commodity Security Logistics Division, um, uh, excuse me, Contraceptive Security Logistics Division. No, I'm sorry, the Commodity Security Logistics Division within the contraceptive uh, working uh, stream that they have. So um, yeah, family planning products were uh, a focus area for them, obviously. So. Those uh, uh, comprise the bulk of the selection. Um, we selected products that were both, uh, you know, within the priority products that that USAID is interested in, as well as commodities that were of most the most popular and most likely to be used as contraceptives within Angola. Uh, and then for the uh, anti-malarial, we just used um, the most common treatment method that was being used within the province. Um, I believe some use ASAQ, um, but AL was the most appropriate one. Um, here. Um, uh, Senamed, you can ask your question in French, but neither of us speak French, unfortunately, so I would have to Google Translate it and then give you an answer in English. Um, if that's acceptable, I'll be happy to answer your question. Uh, 
or if anybody else can help us. Uh, but we'd be we can certainly follow up afterwards. If your question, I, was, I, in, was, if your question was in Portuguese, I think we, we would be more to, to help you. Right. Um, I, maybe I can also point out that uh, I we don't have our email up there, but um, we should. And I don't know if it's available, if we can get it there. Um, and if there are any questions or any comments or any anything that you'd like to get back to us on, feel free to email us. I don't know, can you can you add that to the screen, Arthur? Uh, you can put it in the chat, Michael. Oh, good sure. idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then so I see we have one last question here. So while you're doing that, Michael, I'll, I'll answer this question. So based on your experience, what are the benefits of the door system compared to traditional SMS alert um, or use of WhatsApp groups? So it's a great question. Certainly there are other technology platforms that you could utilize to solve the problem. Um, it isn't, yeah, the door system isn't the only way to solve this issue. I think as, as you know, supply chain public health logisticians, there are lots of different ways that we could tackle this problem. And I'm sure lots of people, you know, on the call today are probably thinking of other ways this could be solved. I think for us, the interest in using devices, right? There's there's two pieces to it. I think there's there is something to be said about the introduction of new technology or new objects into your workspace. Uh, it has you focus a little bit more. You're interested in it. It's novel. It's different. So that uh, sort of allows you a little platform of buy-in, I think. And then, um, like implementing that with a very heavy people-focused uh, approach for implementation ensures that the the novel nature of the technology does not wear off and people just stop complying, but that they you utilize that excitement about something new to help them understand how it can improve their space. So certainly I, I think WhatsApp or SMS could work, um, you know, but I, I know that with those things as they are part of your regular behavior, regular things, you may not be as alert to them, you may not be as aware um, because they're part of, uh, you know, the regular sort of activities you do on your phone. Certainly is possible, um, but we find that this system also uh, is helpful because not everyone will have money on their phones. You know, people are are are, are sw swapping SIM cards regularly. Um, that's something else that we found that we had to you know follow up pretty regularly was to make sure that we had the right contact information for the focal points. Um, some people had multiple phones they were working with, um, so I think there is also that challenge of making sure that there, you have the right numbers and things for people all the time. But by having the the device that generates the alert exactly where the problem is, it, it short circuits that need to go find your phone, to have money on your phone, to text somebody, any of those things. There are no requirements from the user other than exactly what they need to get their job done. Did you wanna add something, Michael? I think in the short pilot we had, we had two phones stolen from people and had to change uh, numbers. Um, the, I, I, a really good point you've made a couple times, and I will repeat it again, just is you know, we've we both seen activities like this crash because it, it, it seems so obvious that here's the technological answer to the problem. Let's install it. Why doesn't it work? Why aren't people using it? And so we, we really were focused from the very beginning of going into this as a not a technology solution but a, a technology assisted solution for a human oriented problem if those words make any sense um you know it it, it is helpful to have something that frankly looks cool oh it's a button i can press it ever since we were kids you like pressing buttons it's fun let's let's do it let's report that way and 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 they did but we we really had to focus on the behaviors and and so that is what why you know a lot of what arthur was talking about was just the the the, the behavior of people doing it responding it to the 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 alert and and making sure that this contributed to that ability and, and didn't replace it and didn't uh, preclude it. So um, I see there's one, is that a question there? Uh, no, was, that was uh, Jim, Jim with, with, his, yeah, yeah. Ex, with his expert opinion, uh, expert uh, perspective on, on this also. Yeah, from a security standpoint, oh. it does maintain the, the security of the information um, and keeps, keeps all of that in one system. So that, that's also definitely a, a valuable point when you consider uh, data integrity and, 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 you know, the sharing of it. So 
Um, with that, it is nine o'clock. Um, so I think out of respect of time, I know that lots of people probably have um, other meetings they need to get to. So we'd like to say thank you all very much for joining. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, Michael did put our contact information in the chat. So if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, and I did wanna just say, um, our colleague Haley was able to join this morning for a little bit. So thank you very much, Haley. We, we do appreciate you joining as well. Thank you, everybody.